Yes, we've come to McDonald's. I think the last time I came to McDonald's for breakfast was probably the last time we were in Japan. I can't remember going again since. Uh, but something amazing happened today. Nicole is finally getting her apple pie. How exciting. Would you like an apple pie with that? Would you like an apple pie with that? Yes. Yes, I would like an apple pie with that. <laughs> We were shocked when an option was an apple pie instead of a hash brown. Like that, is, that just seems crazy to us. Back home that would not be an option and you would think that the hash brown would be way cheaper. But I don't know, maybe, maybe that's not true here. But anyways, it was an option so we did it. We got apple pies. And the breakfast, how's the breakfast here? It's so yummy and so fresh. The, um, it's actually crispy on the outside. Oh boy. They could have a bigger slice of patty but what can you do? <laughs> I guess I should get get started before mine gets cold. Did you see my extendable straw? Oh, I already extended it, so it's not that exciting. But what a healthy way to start the day. <laughs> yeah, we haven't had a pie at home in a long time. Since they're not as good because they don't deep fry them. They're baked. But um, so we don't know if this is something unique here or they have this at home. But the packaging here is very smart. At home, you usually just open this out, and you have to try and balance the pie while squeezing it, and you, you, you squeeze out the filling and whatnot. But this, this, this is genius. A perfect pie holder. How dare they try to make you balance your own pie at home? Well, I think the problem with that is you have to squeeze it yeah. to keep it from slipping and then the filling shoots out. Mmm, deep fried pies are the best. Alright, that's breakfast done. Uh, that was a very enjoyable. Nicole just uttered those words to me as I was turning the camera on and I agree, that was very enjoyable. Not something I ever do at home, but uh, that worked out. I was a little bit, like Nicole mentioned, let's go to McDonald's for breakfast tomorrow. And I was like, really? You want to go to McDonald's? But uh, that hit the spot, actually. The uh, I had the sausage McMuffin with cheese, and it was it came out really nice. It it was not just slapped together. It felt like they did it with a little bit of concern. <laughs> but uh, the main draw for me was the coffee, because I knew I'd be able to get a big coffee with my meal. But I'm still a little bit hungry, so I'm probably gonna pick up an onigiri keep exploring those at, at the convenience stores. That's what I was hoping to do when we were in Tokyo since we didn't bother with breakfast at the hotel. I just get some uh, some onigiris and stuff like that at convenience stores. All right, we're heading out after breakfast. Uh, breakfast is really close to our hotel. It's in the Shio Dome site, so we could just walk to it in the underground uh, and then walk back to the hotel. But we're noticing a very different crowd here. Yesterday was Sunday, today is Monday morning and uh, it is a very different crowd, obviously. Everyone's coming to go to work, and it's rather quite busy. Lots of people are dressed up, and uh, we're navigating through the crowds. All right, our first stop today is Sensoji Temple, and this is a Buddhist temple that was founded in 628. That was a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, it also has an area where there's some Shinto shrines on the grounds here, that in the northeast corner of the grounds and uh, it's pretty it's pretty awesome because they um, they survived the whole splitting of Buddhism and Shintoism during the Meiji Restoration period where uh, they really wanted to get rid of Buddhism as a key religion and wanted just Shinto Shintoism to be there and be front and center um, so unfortunately most of this pretty much this whole area was de destroyed in World War II so what we're seeing is largely reconstruction um, and we've come you start off down along at the at the base of this long walkway going up to the temple and at the base of that long walkway is a huge gate called Kami Narimo Gate otherwise known as Thunder Gate and this is huge gate that you've probably seen tons of pictures of because it has a really big paper lantern hanging in the middle and it's also flanked by two neos which are protectors uh, there's one on the left which is wind or th I don't remember left or right, but one of them is the god of wind and one of them is thunder and they stand and protect the entranceway into the temple grounds. 
once you go through the gate underneath that huge lantern, what's in front of you is Nakamise Dori, which is the, the street leading up to the temple. And it is lined with tons of shops selling, uh, you know, souvenirs, clothes. Like I saw some places selling hats and all kinds of food, sweets and whatnot. And I'm probably, we're probably gonna stop along the way and uh, pick up some stuff to try. Or maybe we'll go up to the temple and come back and get some stuff before we head out of here to our next destination. But at the end of that street, before you actually get into the temple is another huge gate. And this one is called Hozomon Gate. And it's another impressive gate. It also has a paper lantern. And and then you go through it and you'll come to a huge incense burner. And there you'll see people waving the incense over their heads. And that is really a form of purification. You're sort of purifying yourself before you go up to the actual temple itself. There are a pair of sandals that are huge and they're really big. They're said to be kami sized sandals and kami are like deity or gods. Uh, and they are to symbolize the power of the Neo that protect this place. Uh, but they're, they're quite the feat of engineering, I think. They come from a city uh, in Yamagata Prefecture, which is where we were earlier on the trip um, at Zhao Onsen, was in Yamagata. And they, the city is called Maruyama. And it takes like, I think they said 800 people to make these sandals. They each weigh 250 kilograms. Um, and they're replaced every 10 years. So that city makes a new pair every 10 years and, and donates them or offers them to the temple and they're put here on display. So we're gonna go find those and show those to you. Um, if you come here, don't just do the, don't, don't just walk that one street and go to the temple and leave. There's tons of stuff around that you can actually get and get into and see. Like there's a really nice garden that we're gonna go walk through after. Um, which most people miss out on, so it's really quite quiet. The Shinto shrines themselves also are often overlooked because uh, they're not really in the main fairway of all this action. You have to sort of go in out, uh, out of the way to go see them, so you should go do that. And there's a pagoda here. I think it's a five-story pagoda, which is really quite amazing. Um, it's actually... Well, I was standing here when we, when I, in the picture that I use on my Instagram, um, was in front of the pagoda. I don't think the pagoda made the cut in terms of cropping for the picture uh, for the Instagram thing, but that that picture was taken here in 2007 uh, when we were here on our honeymoon. But it's unfortunately shrouded right now um, because they're doing work on it until next year sometime. But I'll show you. This is the second gate. And that big gray box behind it, that's the pagoda. And so it was what often happens when I'm making these videos. Nicole has wandered off and I have to go find her. I'm gonna go find her. We're gonna go make our way through the second gate here, purify and then go up to the temple and take another look. Uh, I think we've come here every time we, we come to Tokyo. It, it's usually quite the experience walking up to the temple. It's pretty calm today. Usually it's quite busy, jam-packed. I bet yesterday would have been insane. Today's Monday, so it's probably a little bit quieter. But the behind the, t behind the temple is usually quite quiet, so we're looking forward to strolling through there and having a bit of time to reflect. Did you guys check out in by something? Yes, it's your fault though. You called me over as I was doing that last clip um, talking about the street, which is really jam-packed with stuff, like stuff to buy and eat and whatnot. Uh, and not so bad with people today, luckily. I think we got a bit lucky there coming on us Monday instead of Sunday. Uh, but she called me over and there was a guy making little cakes filled with red bean. And that's something I've been wanting to get for a while. Usually I see them in the shape of fish, uh, but these ones are more, uh, like there's some shaped as pagoda, as there might be, there's a turtle. So I got suckered in. And the I demonstration got, was really good, yeah, I must really say. Yeah, it was really neat how he has his like hot, his, his uh, mold, and then he pours a little bit of batter in, and then a ton of filling, and then a little bit more batter, and he closes it up, and he has this really neat gas uh, like burner that runs along. He had like four or five of these molds going all at once, and he's just non-stop cranking them out. So I got them fresh off the mold. I like that he was taking so much care with each one. Like he wasn't just, whacking them together yeah. each one was like carefully made yeah and he had slowly. a really good technique down so let's show everybody what you got all right so do you see the packaging 
you open There's the, the bag. Oh, you emptied the box. Oh, it was folded up like this. Okay. And then it's unfolded like I had it. And then inside are my cakes. Here's an interesting one, sort of in the, in the shape of a pagoda. <clears throat> the exterior is surprisingly crunchy. And it's really, really thin. I don't know if you can get that. Super thin. And then the, it's a pretty thick filling that they use. It's really good. Do you want to try some? No? <laughs> we came into a side street off the main drag. And there's tons of side streets. And they're all... Well, this one's not too jam-packed. But I saw quite a few of them that were really jam-packed. And I decided to sit beside a, flo a uh, little float here. Here, I'll show you. Well, this is, I can't see too well because of the glare. So that is a portable shrine that they use in different festivals, Shinto festivals. Um, it's taken out and they parade it up and down streets during festivals, Matsui's, uh, and it's really quite intricate. <laughs> I would hate to drop this by accident. And then looking out over this way, you can see Tokyo Sky Tree just towering up over the buildings, which is now Japan's largest structure. Okay. Shall we continue towards the temple? Yes, let's carry on. What's your favorite thing on this street? I like all the lanterns that line all the shops, and on top of the lanterns are these. If you look at them up close, they're just kind of ugly plastic baubles, but when you have so many of them in a line and spaced evenly, they make the street look really pretty and really festive. Hmm. And it's nice here at night when they light them all up. Yeah. So we made it over to the pagoda. It is shrouded, as I mentioned earlier, but it is, it is a five-story pagoda. So I did remember a factoid from way back when. That's pretty impressive. And it was built in 942. 942, this has a lot of history. Um, and it was rebuilt by one of the Togugawa shogunate. Uh, let me see if I can pronounce his name. Ei Mitsu. Uh, he rebuilt it in 1648. And it's been rebuilt several times, I guess, since then. Uh, it's been built, we've had to be rebuilt because of the war, and it's most recently rebuilt in the 70s. It's unfortunate that shrouded, but I will put up a few pictures uh, from when we were here in 2007 or maybe 2012, uh, and, we'll, and I'll put those up so you can see what it looks like, or you can search the internet and see what it is, but I will put some up here. And we're standing on the inside side of the, of the gate here. This is the second gate, Hozomon Gate. And you can see the huge sandals that we talked about a bit earlier hanging on this side of the gate. We're gonna get up close and I'll show you how big they are in relation to Nicole. Here is Nicole. Here is a sandal. They are pretty massive. I don't know, I don't know what I said earlier. I, th I think I said 250 kilograms each. The sign here actually says 2,500 kilograms. So uh, I'm pretty sure I wrote down what I read online properly, but anyways, they're heavy. <laughs> they're, they're damn heavy. And they weigh, I'm sorry, they are 4.5 meters high. And all that racket you can hear in the background are people shaking out their fortunes. I'm not quite sure, do you know how that works? Yeah. You know how that fortune thing works that they're shaking? Yes. You go up and you put a little offering in the box and then you take the, um, the shaker and then you ask, your, ask for your wish or you, you ask about like what, if you're trying to make a difficult decision and you're trying to go one way or the other, you kind of ask your question and then you shake out um, 
a number and you take the number and you, fall, you go to the corresponding mailbox with drawer. the right number and you pull out the um, build the drawer and it has a little piece of paper and if you can decipher it yourself then um, it helps you with your decision. If not, they always have somebody um, on site that will help you decipher the um, paper for you. And to see if your wish is going to come true or whatever it says is sort of you relates to the question you ask. Yeah. Hmm, very interesting. So that's what all that shaking is. People trying to shake out their numbers. Okay, we made it to the massive incense burner and there are some pretty serious incense burning going on. A lot of smoke. Nicole's going to make her way into the crowd there and purify herself. Pulling smoke over yourself. I'm pure. You've been purified. Yes. And then once you purify yourself there, you can go up to the temple. And so if we look in the other direction, there is the gate. building here, the main hall, um, paid our respects, you know, got a candle, made a wish, and we are heading out. So behind me here is the garden that I mentioned before, which is usually much quieter than the main, the main area, and there's quite a bit of, quite a few buildings and statues in this garden. And so we'll go in there and, and take a look, and then we'll go find the Shinto shrines. Godo Hall. Uh, it was established in 1994, so it's pretty recent. And it was put up to commemorate the 1200th anniversary of uh, Enin, who was the monk who established Sensoji Temple here a long time ago. It has a very nice roof. I really like the gold, I think they're horse heads at the top. They're really gleaming today on this beautiful sunny sunny day that we got lucky with walking around here looking for the shrines and we came across this hexagonal temple which is really uh, quite striking because it's, it's quite old and then the sign here says that this was built in 1618 making it uh, the oldest architecture in Sen Soji. So it makes me think that it survived the bombings and this is uh, the original structure. It was used to be lacquered red, that's long gone. You can see little remnants of red here and there, but it must have been quite the sight if it was lacquered red to match sort of like the actual main hall. Oh, there's Nicole's head in my shot. <laughs> so yeah. Built, I say, built in 1618. It's also quite important to the temple here because there aren't many buildings in this structure, hexagon structure in Tokyo. So this is one of the few. That's really cool. Glad that something has survived all these years. the Shinto area uh, it stands out to us from the Tori here behind me with the rope and the white banners that look like lightning bolts hanging off of them 
Uh, so this in front of us must be <laughs> Sensoji, or sorry, this is, this is As Asakusa Shrine. Um, it's the end. The walkway up here is flanked by these these lions or dogs statues. The one with the mouth open and the one with the mouth closed, and then the shrine straight ahead. Definitely the first time we've been in this area. We have we just totally missed this every other time we've come here. Uh, it's kind of tucked out of the way, but I'm glad we found it this time and came to take a look. It's not as grand as the Buddhist areas uh, in this complex, but it's still, it's very beautiful. The building itself has a lot of nice carvings and paintings on it, and a lot less gold. I just noticed that the rain gutters on this, on this shrine are really interesting. I've shown you them before, which were like chains coming down where the water would run through, but this one's pretty elaborate. So coming off the gutter, it's funneled down into these buckets. That are like the Rao Khan bath yeah, buckets. they kind of look like the Rao Khan bath buckets. In their own little kind of hut. <laughs> They're not messing around with their incense lighting here. They got some really insane incense lighters. I've never seen that before. It's like this really, really hot uh, core. In, in like a decorative barrel and, people, and it just you just put your incense and it just like lights them with no problems. We're heading back into the madness. We're going back into the main street here. We're gonna find some more snacks to try and then I think we're gonna head out of this uh, this area. It's almost two, it's 20 to two. We've been here for a good two hours, but we're a little bit hungry so we'll get a few snacks and then we'll uh, make our way. Sweet potato. Sweet potato. <laughs> Alright, we found a few snacks. I got this interesting... It's like a deep fried ball with stuffing in it. It's almost tempura like. And this one is sweet potato with white bean. Well, let's give this a try. It's totally tempura. Yeah, you get that tempura flavor right off the bat. Mm. And then the sweetness from the paste come through. I can't say I get a lot of um, sweet potato, but I'm definitely getting the white bean. It's a bit reminiscent of like a lotus paste from a mooncake. Mm. Um, they had all kinds of flavors. My first choice was sold out, which was cherry. But it's good. It's really. Do you want to try some? No, thank you. You don't like this type of stuff. No. I just offer to be polite. Mm. What did you get? I got a bag of ugly chestnuts. It's not packaged like um, in Murray and Sendai, where the packaging was really pretty. Um, I guess we're in a touristy area, so they actually it was actually quite a bit more and less pretty packaging. But let's hope that the um, chestnuts taste good. Oop, they're big and ugly. Yeah, they're definitely not as good quality as the Sendai one. How's the mm -hmm. flavor? Still good though. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Let me try a bite of that one. Mmm, it is good. A the good roasted chestnut. The ugly chestnuts are, I think, one of my favorites just because they're so big and meaty. Mm. And you get a lot of um, bang for your mm. peeling flavors. <laughs> I think we should call them rustic, not ugly. Okay. Rustic. <laughs> they're, they're rustic chestnuts. All right, are we going to go back in for more or are we going to move on, do you we're think? We're moving on to our next destination. So we'll walk down the main drag and if anything catches our eye, we'll share it with you. Yes. What you got there? 
This is called an okiucha ice cream. Well, I'm thinking that's what it's called. I mean, that's how I'm pronouncing it anyways. <laughs> I read somewhere that this ice cream, this ice cream shop claims to have seven times the matcha as a regular um, green tea ice cream. So um, it was a premium one and we went for it. And it is super, I've never seen anything so dark green like this on an ice cream mm, before. And yeah. the consistency looks interesting. Yeah, it looks like they just jam packed it with um, high grade matcha powder. Yeah, it's not as smooth looking as you normally get. Okay, here we go. It looks thick. Ooh, I don't want this at top. Wow. They did, it's, okay, I think it, they definitely did jam pack it with the, um, the... Matcha. Yeah. So their claim is definitely not unfounded because I can definitely, definitely taste all the matcha that they've jammed in this cone. Well, you can tell it definitely looks different. Mm -hmm. And when she was squeezing it out, she used one of the pucks. Yes. Like they all seem to do here yeah. now. And uh, it came, like the way it came out here, you could tell that it wasn't just like a pure ice cream. It had a lot more to it than that. It's really good. I Sweet. really am enjoying it. It actually tastes like a healthy snack rather than like yesterday's Hagen Daz bar. <laughs> it's really good. But right. it was pricey though. Yeah. The dinky little thing was 500 yen. Mm. But it was it worth it? Yeah. Good. I'm glad we got it. All right, let's make our way to our next destination. So Nicole's been feeding me this green ice, green tea ice cream, matcha ice cream. And it is amazing. She's right, the flavor is just smacks you right in the face and it's it's really, really good. And it's... I want more. <laughs> more. No more ice cream for you. Uh, so, this is what's left that she's given me. She doesn't like the cone, so I get to finish it. But she at least leaves me a bit of ice cream in there. I'm such a loving wife. Yes, you are. <laughs> We're nearing our next destination and there is a hint over my shoulder of where we're going. I'll leave it at that for now. Right, the place that we decided to come and take a stop at was the Asahi Super Dry headquarters here in Tokyo. Uh, it's this black building with this gold flame, very interesting architecture and beside it is the sort of goldish tinged tower um, and at the top of the tower there's a, a couple restaurants, including the Asahi Sky Room, where you can get a pint and an amazing view down um, over the river and looking back towards uh, the shrine we were just at, or the temple we were just at. But we got up here and it's pretty, pretty depressing. So we're gonna pass. Um, not only is the beer more expensive in their headquarters, which is weird, the, the place itself is just not somewhere you really wanna sit. I mean, you could sit if you if the view meant that much to you, I guess, but uh, it's just not what I was expecting. So after four trips here to Tokyo and finally making it here, every trip I'm telling Nicole, we gotta go, we gotta go, I wanna check it out. Uh, go to go to Asahi's like, headquarters, that'd be pretty cool, blah, blah, blah. But it was not worth it. So we are gonna head back down and skip this one and go to our next spot. We're gonna just head out of here, skip it, next. Let's go see what we can find next. Hey, I'm kind of bummed. I always wanted to go there, and then finally went there and it was just a letdown. But we are on, our, on the move. We are heading to the next spot. It's about a 40 minute walk. We're gonna walk past um, Sensoji again and uh, just make our move. But yeah, that building was, was uh, built in the 80s and never updated so it was so bizarre Nicole and I were just talking about it and Nicole mentioned Die Hard and she's like I was expecting Bruce Willis to jump out of the elevator or something and it's totally true I should have taken a bit more footage of the building I got a bit of the lobby so I'll show you that but yeah it's just it's just dated uh, and we <laughs> on the way down from the 22nd floor we punched some random numbers uh, and stopped and just looked out out of the elevator to see what we saw Nothing too too exciting, unfortunately. But oh well. On to our next destination. We don't have much light left, so we're uh, we're trying to make a move. So very hot. Please take care. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Very hot. Please okay. take care. Thank you. Thank you. Get a... Yakimo? Yakimo. This this name Yaki Yakimo. So the first the first word is um, cook or this one is cook. Cook? Cook uh yeah, cook. Grill? Barbecue? Cook, cook, roast. Roast. Cook, roast. Roast. Imo uh potato. Imo. Imo. Mm. Potato. Uh -huh. I see. Mm. Do you want some yaki emos? <laughs> yes. I wanted I've been wanting to get like a like a good sweet potato, baked sweet potato for ever since we got here. And this was like uh, we're running out of time, so hopefully this is a good one. But let's walk a little bit and let it cool off. It smells really good. Yeah, it smells good. Let me see if I can get let's go over here and get out of the way. It smells I can definitely smell the yaki. I can definitely smell the yaki part of the emo. Yeah. So he cut it a little bit and then broke it in half. Ooh. And I guess you could peel it maybe, but you gave us spoons. So I'll try it with a spoon. He doesn't seem to be doing a brisk business. No. But it's also like an odd time in the afternoon. Mmm. Yes. It's really good. It's super sweet. Oh, yucky. And uh, the flesh is not as soft as I thought it was going to be, but it's quite soft. It's very good. Potatoes have no business being sweet. This one does. <laughs> okay, let's move on.